How's it going guys? In this video we are going to be uploading our application to Heroku. Now Her Heroku has been pretty popular over the past few years especially for Ruby and Rails projects and a big part of that is just because of the ease of setting up a new server and on top of that they have a free plan which is great for uh, development apps or testing testing apps and um, even just if you're trying to launch a small app for your startup it's a perfect choice. So the application that we are going to be deploying today is our Craigslist clone. Now we did this in the past video, uh, you can check that out, I'll leave a link to that video. But we just want to put this uh, really simple application live on a new Heroku server. So in order to do that, the first thing you should do if you haven't already is go to the Heroku CLI page. And on that page you can install for Windows or for Mac OS and there's a few custom installation methods as well but in my case I've already got uh, this installed um, previously because I've been uploading applications to Heroku but you can run this in the command line if you're not sure so you can run Heroku-V for the option to check what version you're running so in my case I've got it installed already and by default then we have a local git repository for any new Rails projects that we create. Um, in this case I've got my Git repository, I've got the code checked in already so that's just going to make things a bit easier. So for the purpose of this video I'm going to show two different approaches to setting up the application for our uh, Rails app. So in the first instance here I'm going to manually create the app within Heroku dashboard. So it's very simple, you just select the create from the drop down menu, enter a name for the application, uh, and then you're up and running. So then you can just copy this link here, this, uh, this one liner of code for the Heroku Git remote, uh, and then you pass in this Craigslist MVP as the app name. So let's try that first and see how that goes. So now we can see that we've got this git remote set up and it's set up here as Heroku the name and it points to the git repo on our Heroku uh, on the Heroku platform so we can actually rename that if we want to give it a better name uh, so in this instance I'm just going to call it live rename it from Heroku to live and you can see the change here has taken effect now you don't have to do this um, but I just like to rename it to make it easier for myself so now we are just pushing to this uh, this live repo that we have set up on Heroku and we're pushing to the master branch. So that should build our code and put everything on that server for us automatically. So now our code has been deployed and we can use the command Heroku open to actually open this URL in the browser. And you'll see we've got this error message and a quick way to kind of debug these error messages is to run Heroku logs and you can just have a look at what went wrong uh, and in this case it's telling us you know that it can't find this table in the database and of course the reason for that is that we have not set up our database yet on Heroku so let's go ahead and do that now so now we'll run the Rails DB setup command and if you do this on localhost, it just builds all the databases straight away. Um, but if you try to do this on Heroku, it does throw this message. In this case, uh, for this video, I've intentionally added this just to show you the difference between setting up databases locally and setting them up on Heroku. Now, in order to get around this on Heroku, we just need to run the db migrate command. But before you do that, it's worth just ensuring that you have got the Postgres add-on already set up. So in our case, it's already been set up, and we can see that it has this attached as uh, description on the Heroku page, which basically is saying there is an environment variable set up for us with that URL to the database. So we can see now that in terms of debugging this, we can't run the Rails uh, setup command, and we can't... Um, we already have the add-on in place for the Postgres uh, database so the next thing to check is our production 
uh, settings for this database. Now you can see in here that it's hard-coded the username and the database name but what we want to do is actually uh, use the variable that was created, this environment variable for the database. So this is automatically populated by Heroku and we can see that here if we run the uh, Heroku config command. So now we can go ahead and check these changes into our version control and try to deploy this once again and see if it's now working. So we'll just quickly add this into git and then we will push these changes again to our new application on Heroku. And this time around I'm going to run the db migrate command. So that is what we need to do to run all the migration files that we have in our app. And now once we reload the page, uh, we can see that our app is now working. However, it is missing all of the categories that should be uh, populated uh, in the center of the page here. So what we need to do to uh, create that is we need to run this seeds file that we had created in the last video. So let's run Rails DB seed and this should populate all these categories for us. And now we can see all of the categories being inserted into the table and just reloading the page and now it is working. So that took a few minutes to get that set up but you can do it the manual way but um, it's actually a little bit faster if you go and do it the, the Heroku way. So now we'll show how to do that. So by using the Heroku command line interface we can skip the manual approach and just use Heroku to um, create the application itself and, and do all of that background work. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just uh, remove that old um, live reference we had, that git remote live, and then I will run a Heroku create command. And you'll see here that if you do that, it basically just creates a random name for you. In this case, Tranquil Headland. And you know, if you want a little bit more control, really the way to do it, to do this is to pass in a name for your application. So let's just remove that and do that again. So we'll do create Craigslist MVP uh, build and run this command again. And you can see here now that the name is reflected in the URL and in the Git name, the Git repository. And by default, then it also sets up this, uh, this remote, this Git remote um, path for us. So opening our application then, it's just the dummy application, first of all. So now we need to deploy our code. So we can push to that, um, that master branch now. So while this, this code is being uploaded, I just want to show something more within the Heroku dashboard. Now we have created a couple of applications there just to show the process of uh, deploying applications to Heroku, but we haven't actually been removing the applications directly. So you can see here that there's multiple Craigslist builds here at the moment. So what you can do is go into the settings page within the app, and then at the bottom there is a delete button that we can use. Now you can actually do this using the uh, the Heroku apps destroy method uh, using the command line interface but you can also do it manually. So while this is deploying, I'm just doing it manually here. So let's just open up our app now and see what happens. So this is a new app that we've just deployed using the Heroku command line approach. And um, we can check the logs, but you know we already suspect here that it's going to be a database issue. And again, what we need to do then is just run the uh, Rails migrate command just to get that set up. And now that that's completed, we can try reloading the page again. And that appears to be working. And then we just see the database to populate all those categories again. So now reloading the page, everything is in its right place and the app is looking good. So that's, that's it for this video. Um, hopefully you guys have found this useful. 
and make sure to hit that subscribe button because I will be releasing more Ruby on Rails content in the near future. And do drop me a comment if you want me to create any particular content um, regarding Ruby on Rails. And other than that, have a great day, guys, and I will see you in the next video.